Uh, I think Rajni has joined. Yes, us. I can Rajni, hear you. Can you Thank you. Us? Can you hear me? Hey, good. How are you? Is this sound okay? So it's this the is the first time, 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 time in my whole life that I'm going live. So thank you for being here and part of it. <laughs> So a lot of people have joined the session. I'll just give a quick introduction to uh, Dr. Rajni. Uh, Dr. Rajni is an Ayurveda enthusiast, physician, uh, and transformation coach, and is joining us all the way from the USA. So how is it? How is it going? You know, um, it's US? it's mixed. Um, I have friends who are on the first lines, and um, it is quite a uh, difficult situation in New York. Although they're having less. hospitalizations um and seeing a decrease in the curve after uh lockdown has begun um for the most part in the suburbs it's a lot less urban areas are hit more and um, underserved communities are hit hard um so those are that's the situation in terms of covid from what i understand so yeah so i think I think it's been it's been tough uh, all all through the globe, right? And I think every country is sort of taking their own approach or or way to deal with things. Uh, but but uh, I think before we go into COVID, because that's what everyone is talking about right now, um, can you tell the viewers a little bit about you, about um, sort of what you do, your journey? Show it is saying good to see you, Dr. Rajni, and Dr. Bhagwati has joined the session. Dr. Bhagwati is our in-house doctor and. she was very excited to join the session as well and learn more about you um so will be just helpful if you walk us through your journey um sort of your connection to india your your um connection to ayurveda and and, and yeah so um so my connection to ayurveda comes from my mom who i uh, i'm i'm indian american i was born uh, in the us and my mom's family is from originally from bhavnagar gujarat but she was born and brought up in bombay and um she uh is very into ayurveda so when we were kids and we would get sick my dad would lean towards western medicine and say you know let's get them some antibiotics and my mom would be like drink this turmeric etc etc drink and i would we would be like it tastes weird mom but you know when we started to like put it together that we'd actually we actually would have resolution of our symptoms we would feel better we'd have you know um our sore throat would go away or our our cold would get better very quickly so that's when uh, that's what i would say is my roots are the connection to uh, ayurveda this got strengthened as i went through medical school and um as i actually was applying to medical school and i started to ask myself what what is real healing and what is what does it take for someone to you know i had my own you know uh healing journey and and things like that and i was always looking at how to be healthier and and looking at what are what are people saying around around he- health and healing and a lot of things would would come back to this mind body um approach you know mind body spirit approach and after in medical school i went to osteopathic medical school so that i'm a do by training and the reason i chose to do that was because the philosophy of the do in the us we have two medical doctors the dos and mds and um I was I never really had heard about DOs until I started talking to my advisor. She said, "You know, you're really holistic minded. Why don't you check out DO philosophy?" Because I had I had um shadowed some MDs and I felt like, you know, at the time it's not going for all MDs. Okay? The people that I had shadowed and I had learned from, they were looking at the body very reductionist, you know. This is the heart. We only talk about the heart. and that's that's it you know and we there was of this holistic philosophy that somebody's um mind and their and their stress and their uh levels of overwhelm in life can also impact that part and early on you can start seeing the signs of a certain type of personality type that gets certain diseases or gets certain issues so when i was in medical school around second year medical school i started to um, actually on my free time which 
if anybody else is in medical school, you know, you know, there's not that much. But I found this woman, an American woman, and um, she had studied with a baby in India. And she was very close to where I went to medical school. And so I spent Saturday afternoons or mornings or something with her. I just started learning the full of like, started to understand how the mind and body are one. And Ayurveda has known this forever. Um, and how you can start seeing these, these, the effect of the mind on the body. And so I, I have been an enthusiast since then. I, um, I, I'm not a, uh, BAMS, or I'm not a expert or a media in it, but I do um, really. I feel that we are getting it in Western medicine in the sense that um, lifestyle medicine, integrative medicine, all these new types of philosophies, we're coming to the same point. Ayurveda is just thousands of years ahead, and <laughs> so we we have to like you know. And that's what I talk about bridging the two. And that's what I. Um, Personally, I'm an integrative physician, so I use, I feel that um, I do believe in a divine source. And so I feel that, you know, all of that has, has come to whether it be pharmaceuticals or whether it be um, herbs, whether it be yoga, whether it be acupuncture, all these things can come together to help us heal. It's just depending on the individual healing. It has to be individual and i think i think that that shows your your sort of open mindedness and that's what we've been we were talking about um on the phone before uh, before this live as well um and you talked about about um healing about emotional healing about transformations and how that's a very important part about uh, uh, of of what you do as well and and it's not very common to see that in, in sort of typical western uh, medicine physicians so can you talk us through your sort of journey with healing and, and, and sort of what you believe on, on yeah. that space as well? Wow. Um, you know, my first live, I'm going to be a little, <laughs> this is going to be a little vulnerable here. <laughs> okay. Let's talk. Let's be real. Um, so I, um, I have dealt with something called primary dysmenorrhea or incredibly painful periods. Since I was um, a young woman, I would say since I was like 13 or 15. I know maybe it's a little taboo to talk about this on Instagram live on my first one, but I'm going to go there. So I had to do a lot of work around that, whether it be I had to change my diet, um, adopt more of a diet that fit my body type, which again, through Ayurveda, I have learned so much about you know, my personal body type, being a Vatanpitta person and like what I should be eating, what I shouldn't be eating. And then, so then there's a physical activity components. Then there's, you know, um, from, from more of an integrative point of view, certain supplements that can help to reduce the inflammation in the body, which is, which is the cause of a lot of pain conditions. And then there was the, the, you know, that's the body side. And then there's the, the spiritual side and oh. kind of connecting to yourself, connecting to that higher space, which I believe is within all of us. And that is a source of our healing. It's not necessarily, it's not, it's, you know, these drugs and herbs and everything can bring us to a certain space, but then our own body has to do for our own um, healing mechanisms that we have. And that's coming from the osteopathic um, medicine philosophy that, you know, you can put the patient in its, in his or her ease and in the, and set them up for healing, but you have to make sure that you're tapping into that space. So that was really big for me was to find a spiritual center or if you're connection to myself, it wasn't about going outside um, in that way. Um, I, and that was, a, that was a struggle. That was another piece of it. And then the mind piece of it, you know, um, fear and worry and addressing these things, you know, having to look at where the source of, of um, my own struggle has been, you know, where I, I myself have been very critical at times. I can mean, say I'm a recovering perfectionist because a lot of us who are in medicine or in high achieving posts or even not you know even my mom has this and she has been a loving and wonderful um 
a housewife for many years, but she she had sometimes there's this moment of like I've seen it. You know, we all have these internal dialogues with each other, and and, and that internal dialogue can be um, can be detrimental unless we really look at that, you know. And so, as much as I did it physically, there were moments when I would trip myself up. I would trip myself up by doing all the right things, maybe on the diet side, on the exercise side, whatever. But my own mental talk was not allowing me to fully heal that. And until I started doing that work, um, I didn't. I, I saw the biggest shift after after the last two parts, the spirit and the mind. And that's why I feel that. Uh, you know, when it comes back to Ayurveda, you know, one of the things they say in the Sharika Samhita. Now, I am trying to learn some Sanskrit and Hindi. Okay, I'm really bad. I'm not very good at it. But I feel like I got to be, you know, like puri tarah se seekhna hai ki kya likha hai Ayurveda mein. To mujhe kahin pe mujhe like wo translations nahi mili. Mujhe actually mein like kya likha hai wahan pe, you know. So I was reading the Sharika Samhita, but the With like the subject of the English translation, very slowly, very slowly. But they say that all um, all disease is psychosomatic, and that's a big deal, right? Because in Western medicine, when we say psychosomatic, like we're not we're not saying that it's a good thing. We're not saying we're not saying it as it just is. We're saying that person is you know causing their disease in their mind, but has a negative connotation. And what I loved about um this this part of the the very beginning of the charaka samhita um is that they 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 say it right out you know mind and body you cannot ignore you can't ignore even in you know uh the the times of healing you know when when i've seen that in my own um patients and things people with a, with an attitude of gratitude and uh they are able to shift their focus around their illness looking at it as a lesson giver in their life or a teacher they heal much more quickly and um we cannot and we're at we're at a really cool time where all this is coming out you know some conscious programming and healing time yep. so i feel that um i'm really excited about dr vedya and all that you guys are doing to really bring out this knowledge of ayurveda to the world that really we need this now you know we're getting it that there aren't enough doctors to treat everybody you know there're not enough people on the front lines to treat everybody and we need to become more self reliant self sufficient we need to look at ourselves and we need to become self observant and that is um why i you know it's very new this idea of a transformational coach i'm still working things out um with that yeah. but the idea is that uh traditionally in western medicine it's a very you know i'm the doctor and i'm going to tell you what to do and you're going to follow me and that's what we're going to do and sometimes that's necessary but what i found recently is that you have to get the person the patient to see where are they you know are they really ready to make this change and that's when you need to know their mind you need to know and that's one thing they also see in ayurveda from what i the study is that you the the vedya's job is to understand the rogi and understand them on a deep level their habits when they get tripped up so that they can show them so a real a real doctor healer whatever you want to call them uh, a real person who wants to help somebody a coach is someone who helps the person that they're working with become aware and that's the, yeah that's the bottom line that's what i think so you you talked about uh, you talked about many things but i think for me what stood out was um doing it together doing it holistically and and i think currently um a lot of us are in 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 a very difficult situation and uh, i know a lot of people um in india at least um are extremely stressed about what's happening but but what what's really sort of um what's really stood out for me is that the entire world is in this together right and so there was a question uh, in the earlier part of the conversation um asking about what's the what's the situation on in your in your side of the world um so can you tell us what you've been doing how you've been seeing the the situation 
you also said you have friends on the front line but but you know it's it's really important for for folks in india who don't have access to see what's happening in another country to know that we are all um, together so just to clarify the question is it what you're saying what i personally am doing or is it um or is it more sorry is it more that um you want to know about the situation in the in the uh what people like the day to day people what they're doing here in that way is both right so how how are you dealing with it yeah. how are people around you dealing with it um how yeah has it been for the last 16 so years? i think okay so first of all um i think that everybody's dealing with it differently and i think that always as long as you're not hurting somebody else are what they are you know i have friends who have thrown themselves into their productivity world and that's how they're getting through it they're creating um stuff online they're they're saying okay i lost my job but what can i do um they're being proactive you know um that's an important thing um i in in terms of my friends who are on the front line they're going to work they are taking their precautions um you know masking gloving everything like that um it is it has been really hard for some of them i have a friend who's in california and he is uh in the er there and he can't be with his family he has to stay in a hotel um he has two little boys and a wife and it's been isolating for him you know um i think that uh some of my friends in new york they have gone through a lot of trauma seen a lot of death day in day out uh they tell me that they've never done that many calls to the family that you know your family has your family member has passed away i'm sorry they haven't done that many in all of their years of practice you know so um it's not to spread fear it's just the the truth of what i'm hearing from them. this is not through a media corporation that may have you know, this is not through yep. a third party this is yep. these are people who are really uh yeah they're on the front line and they're really trying their best and it's hard for them they go back to their families and then they say things like um they say things like you know i don't want to die alone and so if i get this you know what you know you know, i want to stay home and pass away like i don't want to die in a, a hospital bed by myself and you know and some of them are lucky if they yeah. go by ambulance they grab their phone but some people they said weren't that lucky and the nurses can't really come to the room everything is given IV outside the room and then pumped into the patient so it's quite a situation in some of those areas and then i said are most hardly hit you know um yeah how, how are you dealing with it how, i how i am the one to i go in we i go in there is it's a little bit of a you know I find that I have to do my um centering practices that meditate do a little pranayama pranayama I think is really important right now because what they're seeing is that the lungs the the, the radiographic or the x-ray findings are first like you you can get sick and you can have a little bit of fever you see the x-ray finding that the lung changes are first so keeping the lungs healthy I, for me has been a priority So doing pranayama I do some yoga meditation journaling to to work through my emotions because when I am there to support my friends I also you know feel that oh my gosh you know like the fear that they're having I am personally not on the front lines right now I teach uh, at a medical school so we are doing we are trying to graduate our doctors to be able to be there and uh, working on that side of it um for so for me in that way i i don't have that direct um in contact it's a little bit lighter for me contact. i also am very very conscious very conscious about what i let into my mind because as i said before the mind is our lens that we're looking through everything with so i read my news i get the updates from the medical community I see what's really happening. I don't try I don't get into the I don't get into the political back and forth of who said she this this because honestly um 
it it does cause a lot of emotion and every day it's changing every day there's a new story every day it's like they said this no they didn't say this this works this doesn't work so i have a personal friend who had covid i have two personal friends who had covid they're okay they did do uh they did one of them um uh did homeopathy and got better okay one of them did had a very hard time she wasn't given uh medication and te- test the testing took a long time it was very beginning when it hit new york and it was it was a um, a difficult situation she is a doctor herself she's a colleague of mine and she treated her sister who got it with um hydrochloroquine and she said within 2 days she was fine so that that recently the WHO said it doesn't work So this is what I'm saying. I feel that there's a lot of stuff we haven't parsed through. So instead of diving in with my mind and that confusion, becoming more confused myself, I do what I have on my plate. I spend a lot of time in nature. I feel that this is a really important time to get back to nature. I feel that Mother Earth has given us a lot of blessings. It's thriving at this time, and we need to see that. And I also think that this, like you know, breathing fresh air and sunlight has been really good for my own health. Um, and i know that my friends in new york so you guys can't leave your apartments i know my you know my family over there my cousins over there but even getting out and on your fire escape you know at my old balcony as i used to call it getting some fresh air you know doing some things yeah. like that so i think it's really a focus on wellness at this time and and health and because at any given moment if you are alive if you are breathing even if you are on a ventilator god forbid at any given time there's more going right more going right on a biochemical level on a, there's more going right in your body to keep you alive so focus on that with your mind focus on what's going right in your life focus on the positive that that's a, that's a big learning from what dr rajni said Um so so Shohit has a question um okay. it's not a very positive question he says uh, why has the US been hit so badly compared yeah, to Yeah so um I feel a couple of things I don't know I'm not an expert at this number one and I'm not um I am not a partisan person like I don't don't associate with either party in the US Um I do think that there was some misinformation happening even for me as a doctor they told us it's nothing it's coronavirus normal strains of coronavirus cause cause a cold you know they're fine they're not a big deal and and it's like oh it was like the flu no big deal so we were not given an alarm i, I feel like that early i i work in new york city yeah and i i you know so this is we were not we were told that it was you know some it's a concerning thing you know but it wasn't the same alarm that we 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 didn't get that same alarm i felt even on the ground as a as a physician as somebody who talks to people who are you know a lot of my colleagues etc and so um the other part of it is yeah that we we did it right i don't know if we went into lockdown as early as other places i think that you know we um there even within the us there was a difference in the lockdown you know certain state governors their state governors so you no. can see the difference of the amount of infection based on based on that and it isn't that um it isn't that we are how do i explain this it's from what i understand covid-19 specific strain is not going away anytime soon unless it's like a miracle of god okay but the idea is that we have to slow things down so that we can we're bracing ourselves right we're doing research we're trying to find out the right medications the right protocols you know how to treat the uh, respiratory distress that occurs what are the initial symptoms what can be tolerated so now we have so much information that those patients that are at risk we can treat with more wisdom versus just we don't know what this is we've never seen this before and everybody you know 
but yeah, I think when I do go outside to grocery shop, because I do um, for my family, I put a mask on, I put gloves on. I, you know, I'm very careful because um, this virus has been shown to last long on cardboard boxes, paper, things yeah. like that. So it's a very unique thing that we've never seen before. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of theories of why that is. I'm not going to go into that because I feel that that's a little controversial. Like, we don't know, you know, do you think that those are the main things? Sure. Yeah. So we have uh, uh, my good friend, Avi says, I think he's more <laughs> yeah. about the various products and he says, send a special <laughs> package to Trump. Um, so, so I think, um, I, I think what, a lot of what you're saying is sort of staying positive. Uh, in this situation and, and, and a lot of people are seeing it um, and, and I think for me as well right um, being busy uh, has been the best way to to keep my mind occupied in this kind of situation uh, and and uh, I think we're all in a very strange situation where we don't know when this will end right as you said this is not going to go away anytime soon and so we have to live in this new format with this new normal mask which won't a part of our lives and now Part of our life, sanitizer, which we never thought of using in India, is now literally a part of everyone's uh, everyone's daily life, right? And so, um, in this time, um, and eventually we'll be sort of transitioning to um, opening in some format, the new normal, and then eventual lockdown lifting, etc. Um, you told me a lot of interesting new things that you want to do, uh, and and new things that that you 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 want to start sort of. Uh, focusing on and I think for, for me this time um, has been really valuable because I've started doing things I've always wanted to do for a really long time. Um, so, so can you talk to, talk, talk to us about um, how you see things opening up and, and, and how you see um, yourself or people around you sort of adopting to this new body? Yeah. Um, so ironically, there's nobody like, there's not like a lot of people around me, right? Because we're all like isolated, you, can't, you know? But what's okay. really cool yeah, is yeah, the yeah. internet, right? Virtually, virtually right? Virtually around you. So, right? virtually so around okay, you. so this is a good question. And I, and I love it. Our conversation was so great the other day. I really was like, wow, I really, I, I feel inspired by all that you're doing. And I, and I really, I, 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 when I heard, when I heard your TED talk, and I, I thought about, wow, like this person was, you know, educated in the U.S. And not a lot of people, like at least that I've known, um, who are who are from India go and um, like you know what I mean like who go back and and do something that is very grassroots and and in in, in India and I just really love that and so um, spinning off to me like one of the things that I'm interested in doing is to work with more of the Indian population I have a very soft spot for my my heritage I have a lot of, you know, Indian pride as well as American pride. I'm, 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 you know, the marriage of both, if you will. Um, and I, I'm really excited to see how, you know, I can help in that in that way. Because I feel that India, the youth of India, you guys have so many young people here, a lot more older people. And the youth is what brings the energy. And they have so many cool ideas and um, I have a few friends in India that I talk to on the regular, and they have so, they really inspire what they want to do for the country, how they want to work on the environmental issues, because all these things are all connected. You know? So some of the things that I'm personally working on are to, yeah, to work on my own, figuring out my own authentic brand, you know, um, as Simply Rajni. I put it as Simply Rajni, and it originally was Dr. Rajni, because everybody's like, you have to use your credentials. And I said, you know, but I have many more identities than that one, um, that one, you know, I mean, very hard to get, but one degree, right, and one expertise. And so I felt like, you know, I wanted to share about my journey, and hopefully it'll help other people as well, um, specific to the Indian population and South Asian population overall. Um, and is I've been doing some work with some friends as well as um, clients around healing some of the cultural issues that we have in our Indian culture um, and personally going through it and then also, you know, helping people on their journey. So that's part of what I'm thinking of doing. Um, and I am currently studying for my 
board exams. So I spent a lot of time with my books and, and reading, et cetera. And I, I have for a long time now felt that you know, the wisdom that um, we have uh, through our roots in Ayurveda and in Vedic culture is spreading fast and furious to the West because there's a real need for it here, you know? And there's a real, I know that a lot of my friends in India, they're like, you know, I took it for granted when I lived there. But when I come here, I see how many people are like paying, you know, $25, $20, 60 bucks for a yoga class, you know, uh, $200 for uh, an Ayurvedic consultation, you know, uh, with a Vedya or, you know, coaching for how, so you see that there's a monetary, there's a value in it. That's what people are able to put, they're willing to spend their hard earned cash or money on their, on those things that give them that, that, uh, that value. So those are the kinds of things I'm thinking about, you know, how to express differently and work more remotely from home. Um, I've just got to notice that we probably are going to be doing more of that with the, with the medical school curriculum, which we're all learning on the fly. And I think that this is also teaching us adaptability and resilience. So I think, I think a lot of what you've said is stay positive, adapt to the situation, make the most of what we have. And from, from the last few things you've said, it's very clear that it's inspired me to say, hey, Dr. Vedder yeah. has to have a bigger presence in the US. Uh, but it's been a really, yeah. really fun chat for me. I think um, for all of, all of you who've tuned into this session, you can follow Dr. Rajni on Simply Rajni. Um, she's much more than a doctor and she has a lot more to offer. She's also always happy to connect with India and, and, and has spoken to me even before this about how she wants to connect more uh, with people in India. And, and we'll be constantly connected with Dr. Rajni. Um, I know it's very early for you there. Um, thank you for, for sort of working on Indian time. Um, Shohit says great thank session. You. So does Michelle. And I'm sure a lot of the people who've been on this session have really uh, learned a lot. Um, for me, I know that, that what we're doing, staying positive, um, yeah. is the right way to approach things and, and keeping on adapting. And I've been truly inspired and I'm sure everyone else has Absolutely. been. Thank you so much for your time. I have to, I have to say what I have to say one thing to be honest. So first of all, thank you guys so much for being here for the first live. I appreciate it. Um, hey, Ashimaj, one of my friends who joined, and I also wanted to say if any of you guys want me to interview Arjun at some point, let me know because I have so many questions for you that we didn't get a chance to even talk about. I want to know, you know, what was that mindset shift? When did you decide to leave the U.S.? Like, how did you get inspired? All all these things you know and that you know but what makes you tick and so if, if, if anything's interested in that let me know we'll do it the other way around <laughs> yeah no, we have, I, we I have, really I agree definitely Michelle already said we have one of the audience have that yes. so we'll get that done <laughs> <laughs> awesome super but thank you so thank much you. for your time as always we'll be live every day at 6 p.m. for Heal at Home. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Hi, guys. My name is Arjun Vedya, and I'm the CEO of Dr. Vedya's. I hope you like what you heard. If you want more content on health and Ayurveda in the 21st century, please click the subscribe icon. We've got a lot more coming for you.